The Department of Justice is defending its decision to secretly obtain communication records of three journalists who covered the federal investigation into ties between Russia and former President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. In the early months of the Trump administration, the Department of Justice secretly obtained phone and email records belonging to three Washington Post reporters. In response, the Department of Justice released this statement. While rare, the department follows the established procedures within its media guidelines policy when seeking seeking legal process to obtain telephone toll records and non-content email records from media members as part of a criminal investigation into the unauthorized disclosure of classified information. The targets of these investigations are not the new news media recipients, but rather those who with access to the national defense information who provided it to the media and thus failed to protect it as lawfully required. For more, I'm joined by Devlin Barrett. He's the reporter for The Washington Post who covered the national security and law enforcement and also broke the story. Um, Devlin, thank you so much for joining us. What do we know about why the Justice Department obtained the phone records of the three journalists who at the time were all working at The Washington Post? So what we know is that they targeted phone conversations from April of 2017 to the end of July of 2017. And that's a really critical time period in the reporting about the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. So we know that they are targeting, they are essentially looking for sources. They're source hunting in the reporter's phone record. And obviously that's uh, greatly concerning to our executive editor. Uh, and it, it is, but it is part of a broader pattern in which the government sometimes goes fishing in reporter's phone records to try to find and identify the phone and email records the government obtained did not reveal the actual content of any communications. Um, without the contents of emails, how does this impact journalists' ability to do their jobs? And also, uh, was there any kind of citation into why they were seeking this out? Did they give any reason? So we, what we know about the phone records is they, they like to go through these records and see who reporters were calling and who they were getting calls from to see if that, that tells them anything about who their sources might be. Uh, you know, uh, it obviously, as reporters, we're fairly cognizant that this is at least possible uh, in the worst case scenarios of leak investigations. Uh, so we try to take steps to make sure that, that, that even if uh, government officials do that, it wouldn't cause any harm. But, you know, no, no, no system is perfect and obviously, uh, there's, there are plenty of good reasons why reporters don't want government officials going through their phone records. As to, I sorry, your second question was about um, what they what might have sparked this. We know that in that time period, toward the end of that time period, there was a story that those three reporters wrote about U.S. intelligence intercepts, in which the the then Russian ambassador discussed his conversations with Jeff Sessions, the man who was a U.S. senator and became the attorney general. Uh, we also know that they did plenty of other reporting on sort of the classified nature of some of the uh, U.S. intelligence gathering on Russian election interference. And what's obviously a concern for reporters who were working in that time frame is that, you know, the phone records could show, uh, you know, give some more clues as to who was providing information about a really important topic to the public, which is how much did Russia do? Uh, what was Russia's role in our election? Now, the Justice Department has said that they were not targeting journalists, but, quote, those with access to the national defense information who provided it to the media and thus failed to protect it as lawfully required, end quote. Uh, does national security justify these searches? Well, certainly, you know, I think it, you have to, take pause and ask, is it worth uh, the public's right to know to go hunting for these records? I think, I think that, is, that is the debate that always happens when the, when the Justice Department does this. Um, you know, obviously, I think, it, I think most people would agree that what Russia did in 2016 and what the U.S. government knew about Russia, was what Russia was doing in 2016, is a topic of tremendous public interest. Uh, so, the government's view is that, well, if there's classified information out there, we have to hunt down uh, the nature and who, who shared that. To be honest, I think as a reporter, what you see oftentimes is that people start, government agencies start leak investigations, 
not necessarily because of classified information, but because a particular piece of information angers them or embarrasses them. Uh, and that is a concern, uh, certainly, whenever you're talking about leak investigations. And look, the government's argument is pretty straightforward, which is that when we see leaks of classified information, we are going to try to figure out who did that and uh, make sure they face consequences for it. This certainly isn't unprecedented. If, if this was an investigation of leakers, the Trump administration isn't the first to conduct these kinds of probes. The Obama administration prosecuted nine leak cases. Um, have there been many leaks under President Biden compared to his two last predecessors? And how is the administration handling leaks? So... What we've seen so far is that this administration is defending how they went after the phone records uh, in the Washington Post case. Uh, as, as our executive editor said, that's, that's deeply troubling, and he's asked for more information as to why they felt this was necessary. I do think that this is as, as many leaks as there were during the Trump era, and there were a ton, especially in that early stage in that, in that 2017 period, uh, leaks are not unique to any administration, and leak hunts are not unique to any administration. I think what you've seen over the years is from Bush to Obama to Trump and now to Biden, there has been a culture of leak hunting built inside uh, the Justice Department and the FBI. So this is, in some ways, a, a permanent uh, footing that they're on to hunt for leakers. Some interesting insight. Devlin Barrett, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Tom.